Good morning and uh, good afternoon. Bonjour, uh, bon dia to all the journalists joining us and to everyone watching online. Today, we'll provide an update on the COVID-19 situation in Africa and the outbreaks of Marburg and Ebola in Guinea and Cote d'Ivoire, respectively. I'm very pleased to be joined for this conversation by the Honorable Dr. Remy Lama, the Minister of Health of Guinea-Conakry, and by the Honorable Dr. Pierre Dimba, the Minister of Health of Cote d'Ivoire. Bienvenue, Monsieur le Ministre. So first on COVID-19, there have now been more than 7.3 million cases on the African continent and 184,000 people sadly have lost their lives. After several weeks of steep increases, we are now starting to see a leveling off of the third wave on the continent taken as a whole. However, the situation remains very fragile. More countries are reporting variants of concern with the Alpha now in 44 African countries, Beta in 39, Delta in 30, and the Gamma in four countries. While it took eight months for Alpha to spread to 30 countries, the Delta has done so in half of that time, only four months, and is now the dominant variant in most countries. Vaccine coverage unfortunately remains low, with only 2% of Africans being fully vaccinated against COVID-19. But there's hope as vaccine shipments pick up pace with the COVAX facility, delivering almost 10 million doses to Africa so far in August. That's nine times what was delivered in the same period in July. We are hopeful that COVAX shipments will keep ramping up to reach 20% of Africa's population by the end of this year. And coupled with deliveries from the African Union and bilateral deals, WHO's hope for target of vaccinating 30% of people by the end of the year is still within our reach. Yet, just as our efforts seem to be taking off, Africa is encountering headwinds. Moves by some countries globally to introduce booster shots threaten the promise of a brighter tomorrow for Africa. As some richer countries hoard vaccines, they make a mockery, frankly, of vaccine equity. High-income countries have already, on average, administered more than 103 doses per 100 people, whereas in Africa, that number stands at six. <clears throat> Failure to vaccinate the most at-risk groups in all countries will result in needless deaths. We say this every week, and it cannot be repeated enough it will also contribute to conditions where the virus will very likely mutate further and could ultimately delay the global recovery from this pandemic. On the spread of COVID-19 in Africa, rapid and determined action from governments and people in a number of Southern African countries, for example, has led to a drop in cases. This shows that public health measures and only where absolutely necessary restrictions save lives and protect health systems and economies. Nine out of 23 countries experiencing a resurgence are in West Africa. Guinea Conakry, for example, is experiencing rising cases. Cote d'Ivoire was added to our list of countries with cases surging last week, and Benin was added this week. Testing rates have been low in most countries in West Africa, mainly focused on travelers. I'd like to encourage all countries to urgently reinforce the public health and preventive measures, including testing, to understand where the virus is circulating and to inform action to protect communities. As WHO, we've assessed the functionality of health systems in West Africa is 21% lower than in Southern Africa. So we can expect the pressure of COVID-19 to hit these countries' systems harder and faster. To prepare for further increases, capacities to manage cases need to be urgently stepped up. The outbreaks of viral hemorrhagic fevers Marburg and Ebola, at a time when COVID-19 cases are rising in a number of West African countries, highlights the multitude of challenges countries are facing in parallel to the pandemic. It also points to the critical importance of sustained investment in preparedness and the resilience of national health systems. The case of Marburg reported in Guinea is the first such case to be reported in West Africa. As WHO, we've assessed the risk of spread as high at that national level and across the African region, considering the porous borders and fragile health systems in the countries. We'll hear more about the situation and the strong response Guinea has mounted 
from the Honorable Dr. Lama. On the Ebola outbreak in Cote d'Ivoire, or the Ebola case, I should say, this is the country's first confirmed case of Ebola since 1994. The patient is a Guinean national who traveled to Cote d'Ivoire from Guinea and within hours of arriving in Abidjan was admitted to a hospital. So in fact, this affects both countries. She is currently receiving treatment in a hospital. For several years, the government of Cote d'Ivoire, supported by WHO and partners, has worked hard on reinforcing preparedness capacities, and these investments have been leveraged rapidly to launch the response. I want to appreciate the remarkable solidarity between neighboring countries. 5,000 Ebola vaccine doses were sent to Cote d'Ivoire by Guinea, which receives the doses with support from WHO. Experts have been deployed to support the rollout. Vaccination of high-risk individuals started just 48 hours after the outbreak was declared. The Ebola vaccine is a critical tool in the fight against the virus. The speed with which Cote d'Ivoire has ramped up vaccination is remarkable, and Minister Dimba will share more details on the response activities. In both Guinea and Cote d'Ivoire, our WHO representatives and local teams are on the ground leading technical assistance and coordinating partners. In addition, we have so far deployed almost 20 experts to support in all response areas, including testing, contact tracing, community mobilization, and treatment, with more experts arriving this weekend. We are enhancing cross-border surveillance in neighboring countries and have released an initial $1 million to kick off both response operations. In closing, I'd like to appreciate the determined leadership of both Guinea and Cote d'Ivoire in responding to these new outbreaks while dealing with the concurrent threat of COVID-19. The African region faces more infectious disease outbreaks every year than any other WHO region. Major investments by governments and donors are needed to ensure these outbreaks are continuously prevented, detected, and contained quickly to safeguard national and global health security. So I look forward very much to our conversation today, and I thank you once again for having joined us. Merci beaucoup.